Welcome, folks, to another edition of Tiffin Cast. Today, I'm with Brent Robertson, who is the president and CEO of Fathom and a businessman in the Hartford area. Um, Brent and I happen to be friends for quite some time now, and um, Brent's been also very busy as a blogger, and he, and I wanted to talk a little bit about his his blog called Possibility of Possibility, and that's why he's here today. Brent, thanks for joining us. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Brent, I know um, you put out a couple of blog posts um, several months ago almost now uh, called Live Your Values at Work, and it really... It really uh, got me thinking about how we approach work and what we all need to be doing to create better work, almost. Uh, because I feel like if uh, we are tied so closely to our values, the work that we produce is going to be even better. I don't know if that's an assumption on my part. What do you think? Uh, well, you know, it's uh, what inspired me to write those posts um, is really, you know, one of the things I'm committed to. I, I think about work um, as a vehicle, right? It's, it's something that is, uh, is an opportunity for us to be fully expressed as human beings. And if we approach our work that way, not as I'm going to put myself aside and then do my work and then I'll deal with myself and be fully expressed when I'm at home or doing something else. We don't have to compartmentalize ourselves that way. We can be fully realized, fully expressed in everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And it really comes down to being present with our work, being aware and awake to ourselves and the things that make us tick, um, and really looking at what it is that we're committed to as individuals. How can we use an opportunity such as work to take on that commitment in some, some capacity? And so, you know, to answer your question, I think that if you are thinking about your values as you work, if you are um, uh, bringing yourself forward in a more fully expressed way in your work, well, the quality of course will be better because you're more present with it. Um, and, and, and I agree. I mean, I think, I think uh, from, from what I have experienced myself as a photographer, the more I'm involved in a in a situation where my client and I are, are in sync, uh, where I can deliver exactly what my client's expecting, and it's all based on the idea of what drives me, everyone's happy. Mm. Everyone seems to feel very grounded and happy about the final product. Um, when it sort of goes off the rails a bit, and, and then you try and bring it back, then things start to sort of go crazy, you know? Um, you, your, your blog post talked a little bit about sort of answering a set of questions in terms of, it's, it's almost a guide in a way. You know, it's a guide to, to help people uh, sort of find their, find their um, what's the word for it? It's, it's, it's just to find their, their root in, in, yeah. and, and sort of go with it. Um, I'm not going to repeat those questions here, but how did you come up with those questions? Well, you know, it's interesting. They, they come... What, what the questions are designed to serve, what, what, what they're um, able to set up. You, you had said guide. What, what they are is a framework. It's an inquiry. Mm -hmm. um, and it's an inquiry that, that is something to take on um, on a regular basis. <laughs> In other words, this, this kind of ex exploration of self isn't ever done. It's an ongoing unfolding of your story. And it continually gets clearer. It continually needs to be reevaluated, reestablished, refocused, reexamined to make sure that, you know, what it is you're up to is who you really are. So the questions are designed to get at um, what I, well, I'll refer to it as to get at your being. What is it that no matter what, you wouldn't give up on? If, if everything were stripped away, if all the other choices were stripped away, what are the things that you wouldn't give up on? And it gets into your beliefs, it gets into your values, and it gets into your commitments. And those, uh, those fundamental things are at the core of each of us. And that exploration, um, you know, what is it about, the, one of the questions is, you know, what is it about the world that makes you sad that you'd like to see changed? Um, you know, that kind of a question gets at, no matter what, what's this all about for you? What is it that you're committed to changing in the world? Um, imagine if you had an answer to that, how you might approach your work, um, those kinds of things. And, and uh, 
so so the questions are a, a, a prose way to get at what are you asking you directly? What do you value? What do you believe? What are you committed to? So um, it drives deeper. Now, all of this is based on some pretty deep inquiry, uh, ontological inquiry, ont ontology being you know the study of the state of being um, that's rooted in uh, the Center for Leadership Studies, which I'm a, a partner with. Um, and uh, these kinds of inquiries are used with executives and leaders um, uh, to allow them to be much more present and much more effective as leaders um, in this really changing world that we're in today. So that's where they come from. Thank you. Um, this, the follow-up question to that is, I, I love the idea of, of creating sort of this groundwork for values and, and working towards um, meeting those values head-on every day and, and being present. Um, I guess one of the difficulties I may have uh, is that sometimes one has to make compromises. Is that do you do you allow for compromises to a certain extent, or do you feel like compromising itself is evil? You know, in the sense it, it takes you away from from those values that so much that you're not either present or you're not creating work that is valuable. I guess in a way. Yeah. Well, that's that's a really interesting question. So. Um, Daryl Connor, one of my colleagues at the center, he does a body of work um, that deals with character and presence. And if you think about your character and presence, your character is pure light. It's, it's the pure energy that, that, that you are as a human being. Um, your presence is, is how much of that you actually let the world see. So over your lifespan, imagine that you, you know, you're this pure, unadulterated light. Over time, you put these shades in front of it and these blinders. And you don't let everyone see fully you, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, and imagine that one day you decided to strip all those shades away, your, your energy, your being would be so bright, people wouldn't know how to deal with it. <laughs> so, so a creative way to look at this in, in a way that, well, my blog is called Possibility of Possibility, inspired by my mentor Mel Toomey. Um, a different way to look at it that allows for possibility is don't think of it as compromising. You need to examine it and say, are these constraints? These are constraints. And number one, are they constraints that I can either overcome or am I forced to deal with them? And then how can I be creative inside of those constraints? You know, when you are looking at being creative in the work you do, in um, you being able to express yourself, you need to have constraints. You can't be creative. You can't paint on a canvas that doesn't have some set of boundaries on it. Mm -hmm. And the thing you can look at then, Sashi, is you can examine, um, are these constraints useful to me? Can I be creative inside of them? Which of them do I need to recalibrate? Which of them do I need to overcome? And to look at it and say, okay, these constraints do not allow me to be creative, so I need to re change the constraints in some capacity. Or I, need to, I can't work the way I want to. I can't be fully expressed inside of these constraints, so I have a choice to make be okay not being fully expressed in those constraints or do something else. If you don't do that, that's critical. If you don't have that inquiry and know that you've made that choice, if you just say, oh, these are just, you know, I can't be do the work I want to do because of this or that and that, you become cynical. So you need to make, you need to make a, a conscious choice that I agree that I'm going to work within these constraints and here's how I can be creative inside of them or I'm going to agree not to and I'm going to make another choice and do something else. So it's it's almost in a way. Um, I, I don't want to call it. I mean, it's, I think the only word that comes to me is uh, you know you, you're finding your own happiness <laughs> in a way. You're saying I'm going to do what I can based on these constraints and and still connect them to my values, and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think it comes down to a fundamental, really elegant idea that, you know, happiness comes from choice. Having a choice in, in making, um, in how you want to be with the world and how you want to interact with the world and, and, and what your future looks like. These, all of these things are choices for us. But most of the time, most of us are asleep to the fact that they're choices. We look at it and say, this is what the world gave me. This is what I'm stuck with. And that isn't the case. 
there it's an opportunity to examine that and say, you know, what are the assumptions I have about the world? Maybe I need to challenge them a bit and really examine, are these, you know, self-created realities? Are these um, constraints that I could be creative in? Is it really, I have, there's no possibility of possibility. I have, maybe I have some choice in what I want to do. And um, I think that's where that the happiness comes from to say, you know, especially, so for you, you know, as, as a photographer, when you're professionally hired, um, specifically for documenting an event, right? That's a very particular kind of photography versus, versus uh, um, you know, um, doing a, 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 a spot for an ad that it's about the creative impression. This is much more about documenting an event. How could you look at what you're committed to capturing about humanity in your photography that is always present and can be put in relationship with what your client wants. Imagine if you could have that, where you're serving your passions and what you're out for. Why is it that you're enamored with capturing human beings on film? What is it about that art that turns you on, that, that, that you're committed to? How can you preserve that, bring it forward with your client so that they know that's what it's about for you and see what kind of reality happens between what your client wants and what you're about? Imagine having that kind of a conversation. That's that's what I'm talking about, bringing that stuff forward. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's let's switch gears just a little bit. Um, I'm I'm intrigued by what Fathom is doing, um, and you know, it's it's for me at least when I look at Fathom, it's just much more than a, a design co agency. You know, it seems like you you're so involved uh, locally with local events and. Uh, community events. I mean, recently uh, I photographed uh, an event where you guys went out and helped food share, um, essentially gather turkeys for Thanksgiving. Um, what what is it? Why is it so important for you as a as a company and as an individual to be so involved uh, in the community? What does it What does it do for you? Well, you know, so boy, what it's what is what is it about for us? Um, so yeah, fa fathom. Um, what is what is that all about? It's it's a it's a, a handful of really bright human beings that have come together um, because they believe um, that for organizations, meaning nonprofit, consumer, whatever it might be, for organizations to be successful, their people have to come first. And in the belief that um, um, that it's about human connection and that the work we do here is about creating meaningful human connections between organizations and the people that are vital to their success. So in the instance of food share, they're an amazing organization because they are orchestrated around volunteerism. Now there's some organizations that yes, they have volunteers and they have programs and they're neat and they're, they're helpful and useful. And then there's some organizations that part of their business model relies on volunteerism. So, you know, w working with an organization like that and the other community organizations that we work for put us in touch with and give us direct experience of delivering a difference, being part of that community, creating a meaningful human connection at a really deep level. And, and in our work with our clients professionally, you know, for a brand to be relevant in the future, if it doesn't mean something to someone, authentically mean something, meaning that organization actually stands up for its values, expresses its values, and, and is committed to delivering something special to you that you can tangibly touch, feel, taste, smell, um, they're out of business. I mean, that's the business of the future. If you're just slinging product and using a psychological advertising model to get it in the hands of people, it's not going to work anymore. It's just not going to work. We don't have any room for it in our lives, right? Right, we right. To work. We only are interested in people working with people that do something that makes a difference for us people that are meaningful to us, organizations or people. We need to connect all that together. So our work in the community gives us, again, that visceral, on the ground. I mean, literally, when we did this year, we, um, we took on um, a whole movement. It was about hunger. We, we did a full year commitment. And here's the commitment of the organization, just to put a context in this. We are committed to having philanthropy a sustainable behavior at Fathom. It's as normal as going to the grocery store for us. This isn't some one-time-a-year thing. This is giving is just part of life, right? Mm -hmm. So what we took on this year was a commitment to hunger. And what we did is we spent time volunteering across the full spectrum of hunger, from planting the seeds to harvesting the crops 
to uh, working with food share and, and how the food gets distributed out to um, uh, soup kitchens and so forth, working in the soup kitchens to actually feed the people. We put the whole ecosystem together, and that's how we spent our time across this year. And it's just remarkable to see how that works. And it's remarkable to see, um, you know, really the courage and the bravery of these organizations that are taking on that kind of a challenge. Now, let me tell you something. This is what, what blew my mind, especially about an organization like Food Share. They operate like a, uh, a, an OSHA compliant ISO 9001 uh, professionally run distribution center. They could be distributing silicon chips, they could be distributing uh, uh, nuclear warheads, whatever, whatever thing they could be distributing. It was a state of the art facility. That's what they were doing. They Absolutely. Were, yep. it's just, you know, why does it have to be that you know, to do good means it's flimsy or non profit y or it's just sort of soft and squ No, these are serious businesses that have serious responsibilities, have serious uh, performance metrics they're measuring themselves against, but they mean something to us. They're trying to do something good. So we see a future where that is hand in hand. Organizations can, can be a meaningful part of their community, can be doing good, and making a remarkable business out of it. And that's what we're after. We're looking for those individuals that are courageous enough to take on something like that. That's terrific. Um, on a more personal note, um one of the uh, the recent posts on your on your blog uh, is titled "Authentic Portraiture," mm. and I'm just curious. First of all, I know you're a photographer as well. Um, what is it that called you to to name that or title that post uh, "Authentic Portraiture"? Yeah, that's that's funny. So you know, my 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 sister hosts Thanksgiving every year, and my sister and her husband. Um, uh, they are foster parents for um, Nigerian refugees and Central American refugees that have been brought over to the country because terrible circumstances happened. And so going to, to their house for Thanksgiving is an incredible event. I have three small children, and they get exposed to a myriad, you know, a palette of global um, individuals that have different stories and different backgrounds. It's just, it's just marvelous. And every year I shoot photography there. Just, just to capture it. But it's more, you know, sort of, uh, hey, everybody, and everybody's smiling and, and, you know, looking in the camera, things like that. This time, um, I used a 50-millimeter um, fixed aperture lens, um, and it allowed me to be 12, 15 feet away and capture those close images where um, those people were in, in their absolute authentic state. Like, it was like looking at them fully exposed. Like, if you could if you could channel what they were thinking at that moment, it was them fully expressed. And so, you know, there were, however many, those were the handful that really spoke to me. And knowing those people and knowing the part of them that I've never seen fully exposed, that's what showed up in those photographs. And that's where the, that's where the label came from. That's, it just came to me as, that was the most authentic I had seen those family members ever. How did you feel about that? Oh man, I can't wait to blow them up and, and uh, have them hanging on a wall. I, I it's, some of the favorite shots I've ever taken. I felt amazing. Have the folks who have your photograph seen these pictures as well? No, they'll see them at Christmas. Oh, excellent. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's a nice surprise. Fantastic. Brent, um, I've taken up quite a bit of your time. Thank you so much again for joining me this morning um, to talk a little bit about your blog, to talk about essentially work and life and, and what really you know, sort of spearheads our our existence. You know, um, to do to do the work that we are called to do um, in a meaningful way. So, thank well, you. Since you, uh, you know, what you're doing, um, I think, is really important. Um, you you have um, you are awake and are tuning into a particular frequency of stuff that's going on up there. Um, and I, you know, looking at the other interviews you've done and, and the kinds of questions you're asking and so forth, you're, you're after something and I think it's brilliant. So keep it up. And, you know, as, Thank as, you. as you see, you know, those people that are playing that music, that, that, that siren song for you, you know, keep, keep doing what you're doing, um, and bringing it forward. It's great. Thank you so much, Brent. Absolutely. Take care.